and you'll hear that today. She's going the 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 defense attorney for Trump team is going to say, you text me all of this. You text me they had a relationship. You text me this, this, this. You text me they went on trips. You are the one who gave me this information. So obviously, he's got some professional um, ethical issues that he's going to have to deal with. Wow. Wow. Yes, it's insane. And did he ever indicate, was the motivation for him ratting out Nathan Way, the whole fact that he got <laughs> that he got kicked out of the... Um, What's up, YouTube? It is your boy once again with another episode of Volary. Man, let's jump right into this. More and more, this Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade stuff is popping out everywhere. And, man, she should have never got on that witness stand. Not when she did. She wasn't supposed to be up there, but she jumped up there anyway. But since she did, all type of stuff has opened up now. But one of the biggest things nobody thought about was how did they find out about the relationship? Who snitched? That's where we're at. You would be surprised at who told the story first. And this is where we're at, people. So buckle in and let's check it out. But before we do, y'all know what to do. Hit that subscribe and hit that notification bell. Definitely share and definitely comment on this. Let me know what y'all think as we go. This is wild. Before we kick it off, shout out to lead attorney and Nate the lawyer. They um well Nate the lawyer actually um put the info out that we didn't know. So shout out to them on this and let's get it. Let's go. This is wild. Can you explain to the people kind of a little bit about what, what's going on in this case? Why is this case in existence? Uh, you put me to work already. All it's right all good, now. though. <laughs> <laughs> people in the chat, this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. Annie Willis and Nathan Wade are lovers. They mm. admitted it. But essentially, let me just go back to the beginning. Donald, not Donald Trump, this guy named Michael Roman. His defense attorney was contacted by Nathan Wade's ex-business partner and his former divorce attorney in his mm. divorce. That's who contacted Michael Roman's attorney. Her name was Ashley Merchant. Whoa, that quick. He jumped in it that quick. So you telling me his divorce lawyer is the one that told the world that he and, well, Nathan and Fanny were getting it on. told you, you can't trust you cannot trust my that's why i marked him the mf -er, because he's the mf -er. so that's how we're going to refer to him the rest of this thing that mf -er told it all but why that's going to be the question later on now ashley merchant um after being contacted by nathan wade's former divorce attorney he told her that hey fanny willis and Nathan Wade are doing uh, getting funny between the sheets. Mm. So after she got that, she then wrote up this stuff like, "Yo, oh, okay, Liz, you know, give me the details." So he's giving her the details. They go on trips. They do this. They do this. They do this. They do this. You already covered Belize. You covered the. So let me tell you our real trips. In October, we went with uh, we went on the cruise with his mom. We got back from the cruise with his mom, and we went to Aruba. As you guys are going to hear from the testimony a little later. You'll hear that came out. Now, the reason why that had to come out is because Fannie Willis and her team were saying Ashley Merchant was committing perjury and was just lying on her. So she had to then come forward and provide the receipts. Lie right here. Bro, no, 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 no. This is the truth, Judge. It, this, it, 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 it is a lie. It is a lie. How did you get this information? How do we know they're not lies? So that's why you'll see um, Nathan Wade's uh, former attorney have to testify. So that's where she's got the information from. So that all that all came out that, that he was feeding them information. Now he doesn't like Nathan Wade because Nathan Wade forced him out of their um their law offices. So mm. Nathan Wade had forced them out 
because it was an allegation of some assault or something that happened. So he had to give up something like 20 or 30 grand and he was forced out of the um out of the firm. So that's why he had a little axe to grind with Nathan Way. So that's why he was feeding this oh, information. So I, haven't, I haven't watched it yet. So yeah. that's interesting. So they got a little axe. Cause... Okay, so now it's starting to get a little juicy. So and this is the crazy thing. Nathan's former divorce lawyer, they were like boys. Like they was in college together. I think they were roommates together. They came up together in the law, you know, law school and all this. And so, you know, you try to get your boy like, hey, man, I need you to jump on this, get this divorce for him and get this divorce. Probably ran it all in his favor. Told him everything. Y'all boys, y'all done talked about things. And now somewhere you done kicked, you know, flipped on me, kicked me out the office. Okay, I got you. My day is going to come. Boom. My day is here. See what he done did? Like I got him. That's why I had on my shirt today. Don't don't f around and find out shirt. That's that's what time it is now. Don't f around and find out because that's what done happened. But damn, bro, you picked this time to get him back. I don't know. Might not be. Should have saved this for another day. I, that's me personally. The little bit that I saw, I guess it was in the first days or something. It seemed like mm -hmm. he was really trying to protect Nathan. So, yeah. Yeah. But, he, but now, but then we found out he was the one that was feeding him the information. So, so after she wait, wait, who was feeding who the information? What now? It was it was Nathan Wade's divorce attorney, his former divorce attorney, who had actually filed all this stuff. He was the one feeding the defense, Ashley Merchant and Trump's team, all this information. Wait, the black dude? Yes, was his attorney, he... Nathan Wade's former attorney, was the one who, who was feeding him the information. Wow. Yeah. That's how they got it. Wow, your former law partner. The lead attorney is all into it. Didn't catch it earlier that he said this. So now he's like, it finally hit. That, that's why I tell you, man, it's so much to this every day. Every day you, you look online or something, it's something different that came out with this case. So it's it's a lot, man. But this going to be long. That Trump case is going to get forgotten. And it's going to be all about the Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade story. I guarantee you. Watch. Just started out talking about the law partners, man. We all know where the bodies are buried in this <laughs> and Wow, I did not know that he was the mole. He was the he was the mole. He, he was, was the, the mole. Bitch. Yep. But not only did was he feed him, and don't forget, he was Nathan Wade's attorney in the divorce. So he had he knew where all the bodies were buried. He knew everything. That mother effer. So he started feeding them information, but then, um, so they had two witnesses now, because don't forget now, now for everybody who doesn't understand, Nathan Wade, so after the allegations came out, Nathan Wade and Fannie Willis then gave testimony under oath. Mm -hmm. Nathan Wade gave it in some interrogatories at the divorce, then he gave some testimony here. And so did Fannie Willis. Fannie Willis gave um an affidavit in this case too. And in both the affidavits, they said one thing, that the relationship started after Nathan Wade started working for Fannie Willis, um, mm -hmm. with the Trump case. But... There's another surprise. There was another person who knew them that also came up and started talking. Y'all didn't know about this one. And a lot of people didn't hear the testimony of this person. So check out who the second person was who told about that little bow chicken wow wow. <laughs> yes. But as you saw on the first day, they, they first brought in one witness who said no, which was Fannie Willis's ex-girlfriend. Um, they were like, she was like, no, the relationship started two years earlier in 2019. Do you have personal knowledge of when Willis and Wade met? Yes. Okay. She told me that they met at a conference. I don't know what conference. Okay. Um, do you still think that it's a statement against interest? Um, Ms. Willis has filed a document that states that they met at this municipal court conference. So, I'm, Your Honor, <laughs> I think maybe I can streamline a little bit. State will stipulate that District Attorney Willis and uh, Mr. Wade met in October 2019 at the judicial conference that we've been talking about. There's no reason to get it secondhand from this witness. Well, well that's, that's true. Um, do you know if Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade started dating in October of 2019? 
I don't know if it was October of 2019. Could it possibly be November of 2019? Could possibly. Okay. And when we spoke, you said it was shortly after the municipal court conference, though, correct? Yes. Okay. So you know that their relationship, their personal relationship, began shortly after this municipal court conference? Yes. And when I say personal, romantic. Is that, is, I just want to make sure we don't get in an argument over what personal and romantic is later. When I ask you personal, do you take that to mean romantic? Yes. Okay. And do you understand it, that their relationship began in 2019 and continued until the last time you spoke with her? Yes. Um, and so from everything that you saw, heard, witnessed, um, it's your understanding that they were in a romantic relationship beginning in 2019. Yes. Okay, let's get caught up on this person here. This is Miss Yearney. Miss Yearney was a longtime friend of the DA Fannie Willis. Uh, they met in college, hanging out, partying, as she stated earlier in her testimony. Um, they didn't, they weren't like best friends, but they were friends. They uh, lost contact with each other about seven to eight years, ran into each other again. Now, I don't know how the relationship was or whatever, but this is the woman who rented out her home to Fannie Willis. So in that, I guess, getting back and, you know, getting to catch up with things, she told the lady about Nathan Wade. You see how it goes? So you told her, but you say she's not that type of friend, but you told her something you hadn't told no one on your staff, not even your team, the Trump team. None of them was supposedly knew that you was messing with this man. So just imagine if you were sitting here, all us working together, and then you kind of find out like, dang, all this time they've been screwing? And all this hard work for two years about to get thrown down the drain because y'all two were screwing? And you had the nerve to tell somebody? So this the lady she told, and guess what now? She's telling. But guess why she's telling? Check this out. Um, when you left the DA's office, was it, um, were you fired? No, I resigned. You resigned, okay. Just one moment, John. Um, can you tell us why you resigned the DA's office? Um, the number of things that was happening. A number of things that were happening, is that what you said, ma'am? Yes. Okay. What, what was happening that you, that caused you to resign? Um, it was a spiral of things, so... Um, I guess the, the last of all is I was, I was put in a department that I knew had no knowledge about something happened and I didn't like it. They didn't like it. And that was it. Okay. Did you have any falling outs with Miss Willis? Well, we never spoke after that. You never spoke after that. Okay. Um, and so you're, you know, without going into all the, the painstaking details, there is no doubt in your mind that from 2019 until 2022, um, Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade were in a romantic relationship. What's the question? Um, you have no doubt that their romantic relationship was in effect from 2019 until the last time you spoke with her. No doubt. And that's based on your personal observations and observe and you know speaking with them and seeing them together and things like that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I tell you what, these educated women, uh, they killing me with the with the terminologies. No doubt. It's all straight up, no doubt. But you all can see what's going on. Now, Fatney Willis never mentioned that this woman that she was renting a house from 
was actually working for her. Not against the rules, not illegal, anything. But you never mentioned that you guys worked together. Y'all had a falling out because she wasn't doing something. Y'all wrote her up a lot about, um, she said one time, but they saying several times of uh, work performance issues. But later on, come to find out, she was told you can either resign or be fired. So she resigned. Bad blood from then on. So I wonder what happened how, with the house situation. Did she kick Fanny out or because she didn't say? But you see where the bad blood is coming on both sides? Now, you would think this was coming from, like, you know, from the Trump people out there doing whatever. But no. From our people. Yeah. Our own doing it or getting them back. Ain't that something? And she up at this church talking about all this racial shit. And it's her own people that's coming out and his own coming out and telling it all. I guess that's the thing now. Everybody want to tell their story like that woman did, that 50 down videos. That was like a shocker. 2019, there was two years before they, or three years before they said the relationship started. And then they bought this defense attorney, Nathan Wade's former partner, who also claims the relationship started before they um they said so in other words they're accusing them of perjuring themselves in front of the court so that's what so that's where you had now okay who's lying about this and no. so now you had the perjury issue that then led them inquire about whether fanny willis was getting kicked back so this is a, this is a and obviously you know this but this is for the for the crowd this is a, essentially what's known as a kickback case in, in general you see it with the mob a lot where you have a, a government official who has a contract to build something. And they'll say, okay, I'll give you this contract. It's to be a million dollars. Nathan, wait, I'll give you this million dollar contract you build the building. But since you have that contract, I want some of that money too. So instead of you giving me cash because it's easy to trace, you buy me a new car, you take me on a lot of vacations, you do all that other stuff. So in other words, instead of getting the cash, I'm still getting benefits, but I'm not getting cash directly. Mm. That's what they're alleging happened in this case. They're saying Fannie Willis, was getting the elaborate trips, was getting all this stuff, was getting all this great stuff instead of cash. So she was benefiting off of the con off of the money she was paying Wade to prosecute these cases. And that is where we're at. We're at so now what Fannie Willis um and Nathan Wade people has to do is prove that the M Effer and uh the lady the least the home, Miss Yearney, were lying. It's gonna be kinda hard. Kind of hard, because uh, how would they know, especially the, the other lady, how would they know? Well, either, either the divorce lawyer, even him. So how would they know, you know, very private information at that time in 2019? So it's going to be hard for them to try to prove them wrong. And if the divorce lawyer came up and said something, if he lied, then it's going to really hurt him because now, it's going to hurt him anyway because you're telling on somebody that you was representing, you know, out of anger or just being vindictive. But it's going to come back on him regardless. So why you get up there and tell it? You, and you know, he texted it to the lady. So he offered it without being asked. He texted them and told them. And she still had the text messages. So it's a lot. You know what I'm saying? This is some real, I'm going to get you back type crap, you know. And so it's, it, and the lady, same thing with, with Fanny. Y'all treating these people like crap because y'all in charge of doing something and now it's their turn. And, you know, it's just, it's just more of this stuff, man. Let's just continue on. They had some more stuff, man. Dude pulled up a lot of stuff. So. And now, if they can prove that she was getting this kickback, then she would be off the case because not only is that you know unethical, but then you got a whole bunch of other problems. So Fannie Willis's excuse that she wasn't getting this kickback because now we have all the evidence. At first, you know, it was all BS and almost all racism, but now we have all this evidence to show that they went on trips. They went on trips together, and Nathan Wade paid for them. And the only his only source of income at the time, or one of his sources of income, was the DA's office. The, the only money you've ever given him outside of a contract is cash. I didn't give him money in a contract, so that was cute. 
but I didn't give him money out uh, in a contract. What happened is, no, we're going to answer it since you said it. He worked. He worked more hours than he was paid, and the county paid him for the work that he did. So don't be cute with me. Now, I'm going I'm to tap on this, that, that aggressive, sassy behavior that she's displaying. That's what's getting everybody's attention. That's what she needs to. She shouldn't get back on a witness stand or anything. No time soon. Because your demeanor, your body language, and how you're speaking, everything you're doing, people are watching that. And she was doing a, a number of things. She was using slang. She being sassy, being defensive, being aggressive, body slump, body language. She slumped. She threw some paper down when she first got in there. She kind of did the, the angry man walk when she walked in, been mean mugging the whole time. You know, that's not what everyone's expecting from her. But that's what she's giving everyone. So the, the attention now is really on her because of this behavior. And a lot of women don't want to, oh, she this, was she smart, she passed the bar. Yes, she did, and so she should know better. For all of you out here saying that, she should have known better to get up there and act like that. You've been in school damn near all your life and practicing for 30 years, and you up here acting like this. And now I got you in all this stuff. Like I said, now you got to prove about this cash. You keeping a lot of cash at home. The large majority of his money is from the DA's office. So now that's why Fannie Willis had to say, I paid him back. But she didn't have any receipts to show you paid him back. So just like any good mobster, mm -hmm. if you don't have any receipts to show you paid the person back, what's the first words out of your mouth? I paid them in, in cash. cash. <laughs> <laughs> so the cash that you would pay him, you wouldn't get it out of the bank. I have money in my house. You big dummy. Why would you tell the world that you keep a large amount of cash in your home? When they asked Nathan Wade, you know what he said? I'm not answering that question. He's like, I'm not going to tell the world if I keep a large amount of cash in my home because he knows somebody be breaking in his home. So she telling people she keeping 15000 or more of cash money in the house. You see what I'm saying? Like, you, oh, man, y'all so angry sometimes. Y'all don't even know what you're saying. But you see how the brother was, he was all calm about the whole thing. Like, no, y'all not slipping up getting me. He say something stupid, but she's sitting there mouth out. I keep it in my eye. Okay, you let everybody know you got money. You're a DA. You should have money. You have money in your house. Pay them again. Like, right? No receipt. They got the money. So then, so then obviously you heard about the whole, well, show me the deposit receipts, right? They're, you're being paid tens of thousands of dollars in cash. You had to deposit in the bank. He says he keeps it at home. She says she keeps fifteen thousand dollars in cash in the house, and you know that debacle. So that's where we're going into with this. Can the judge trust the fact that Fannie Willis says that she paid him back in cash, tens of thousands of dollars? There's no receipts, no proof, and the only proof that they have is, that, as you said with her testimony, I'm the proof. I'm the one mm. who proves it. So there's no there's no receipts or anything. So that's where we're at now. So today you're going to see the explosive testimony of <laughs> of the. Nathan Wade's former attorney and former law partner, who essentially was the one, and they they all go after him. All of them hate him. All of them hate him. But they're trying to get the one piece of information that they're going to try, and it's going to be the whole hour that you'll hear. They're trying to ask him one question, the defense. Mm. And that question is, when did the relationship start? Now, he claims he got that information based on his attorney-client relationship with Nathan Wade. He was representing him in divorce, and he knew and that information about when the relationship started, let's say back in 2019 or whatever, that's privileged. Um, but the state, but the defense is making the argument that it's not privileged because it's a crime fraud exception. Nathan Wade has now come and testify that the relationship happened in 2022, not 2019. So if he has information that shows that if Nathan Wade told him something different or that that statement was a lie, the, him as the attorney, he could be in a lot of trouble. Number one, he filed a false affidavit because he's the one that filed the affidavit for Nathan Wade that said that this relationship started in 2022, which was false. 
He knew it was false because he has information to the contrary. And now he can't, now Nathan Wade can't be shielded by attorney client privilege because he's already answered that question anyway. And if he has information to the contrary, he has to say it. So that's what the judge, but that that's not resolved in this case. They're going to resolve that on Friday, this Friday coming up. But that's essentially what we're building to. If the attorney says the relationship started before he was hired at the DA's office, that means Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade has purged themselves at this hearing in front of this judge. Wow. Can you believe everything they've done may be thrown out because she and Mr. Nathan Wade want to get it in. Been getting it in for a few years, too. It's crazy because she said uh, Mr. Wade stated that uh, a woman can do nothing for him but make a sandwich. Well, you've been making a lot of damn sandwiches, Miss Willis. Because you've been sticking around. If you've been sticking around since 2019, you done made a few sandwiches. Let's put it that way. Well, I hope those sandwiches was good because you just wasted all the taxpayers' money. And then you're going to look like a fool. Because if it's going to be hard to prove that you didn't now. When you got two people talking about it that personally knew you guys. This ain't going well. Not at all. Wow. Now, let me ask you, because I haven't really looked into this, and I didn't know that it was Nathan Wade's attorney, the black dude, yeah. that, that went and spilled the beans. Now, it's my understanding that the divorce case is still ongoing. Did the did the attorney violate any type of ethical um, ethical um rules in in talking about this case uh to the other side when the case is still ongoing and he's still representing nathan way well th that's the two there so there are a couple of things number one he was representing nathan Wade up to a certain point and then and then nathan Wade got another attorney after they kind of had their falling out so for the so yes as of right now he violated every single ethics rule because don't forget he's the one that told them in text messages which again people all never over the phone always in cash don't text your don't text things but she, and you'll hear that today she's going the, the the defense attorney for trump team is going to say you text me all of this you text me they had a relationship you text me this this this. you text me they went on trips you are the one who give me this information so obviously he's got some professional um ethical issues that he's gonna have to deal with because all of that is rule 1.6 which is Whatever you tell your attorney, it's supposed to be confidential. If your attorney starts spilling the beans, then you can't trust your attorney. So your attorney can lose his license for that. And obviously the privileged information, because if it's true that the information that he got was from his attorney, he's spilling it to other attorneys, you know, the, you know, um, in this case, then he's violated that attorney client privilege and he can be, um, and essentially he should be disbarred if that's the case. Wow. Wow. Yes, it's insane. And did he ever indicate was the motivation for him ratting out Nathan Way the whole fact that he got <laughs> kicked? Somebody's at my door. That he got kicked out of the um, of the law firm. Nobody knows with the with the what what it is, but uh, allegedly um, there was there was not only a, there was a client. Well, there was, there was one person in the law firm that allegedly the the former partner had assaulted, and there was a client that he also assaulted. So he was asked to leave because, you know, you have two people and those people were paid um, some funds from the law firm because of these, this assault. So that that's why, you know, so it's so people are theorizing that he didn't probably want to leave and he didn't want to settle that case, but they forced him to settle. And that's why he had bad blood with me. OK, people. So there you have it. There it is. Until this morning, I did not know this. I actually caught this information. Like I went to the gym about 5.30 this morning, me and my wife. And I was on the treadmill and just, you know, I watched videos while I'm on the treadmill. And I watched this, I'm the lead attorney. And uh, some, I mean, it's something new all the time with this, all the time. But I'm glad they talked about it. It was good. Uh, shout out to those guys. And um, y'all let me know what y'all think, man. What do you think about all of this? How this trial going? Do you think uh, 
old good buddy basically was just trying to get back at Nathan for kicking him out the firm. Even though you done assaulted two women, you you know, you can't stay here. And one of them was an employee. You can't stay up in here. You doing stuff like this. You're compromising everybody. But you mad. You still mad that your homeboy didn't keep you around when you was in the wrong. So you got to ruin his career. You see what I'm saying? So an old girl, she just being a vindictive chick. And Fanny probably got a little sassy with her when she was putting her out the door. Oh, okay. I got something for you now, Fanny. You see what I'm saying? So that's why you got to treat people. You got to be nice to people. We always say that. You never know when you're going to cross bridges again. That was always our thing in the military. Don't burn bridges on your way out. That's how I roll. Well, everybody, I appreciate you dropping in, checking this out. Make sure you subscribe, like, share, and hit that notification bell. That's how you support the channel, how you support me. So with all this and all that, it is your boy once again. And I'm up out of here. Peace. All right, all right.